I don't know That's what totally you're fine. talking about necessarily. You know, it's organized in sections, uh, <coughs> some of which is So tell us, tell us about the processor that this ran. Uh, this it ran in the Apollo Guidance computer, which yeah. is a computer of uh, 36,000 words of fixed memory, 36,000 total words, of which 34,000 were fixed memory, which contained the programs, only about 2K words were erasable memory, read-write memory, where different you know, uh, dynamic data could be stored. Uh, and uh, the computer was one cubic foot. Uh, in terms of speed, it was uh, uh, a simple operation. Each memory cycle was 11 microseconds. So one page of code is a, is a rule of thumb uh, was about a millisecond. Well, that's the process. If you know, if you executed every line, mm -hmm. this I don't even know what I opened up to. Extended verbs; those were things you could call up with the uh, disky, which uh, sort of contains sort of small-scale processing. This is the assembler language. Um, just to take some at random, inhibit meant to inhibit interrupts. So if you get in and interrupt it, clear and subtract that thing. Mask rad modes, transfer to storage in rad modes. That was apparently setting a bit in rad modes, which was a flag word. Let's see if I can find some sections I know a little bit about. Uh, the P20s. So, how much of this did you write personally? About 2,000 lines of it, uh, having to do with the lunar landing mostly. A servicer. Servicer was a, a program that ran every two seconds that did the powered flight navigation and then led into the guidance equations. It's not so easy to follow, but it basically it did, read the accelerometers, uh, then oh. did some uh, navigation. Uh, its output was the state vector, uh, the position and velocity vector at a given time, which was the input that the guidance needed. Okay. So that's what Servicer was, was doing. Oh, yeah. uh, during the lunar landing, it also included the incorporation of lunar of landing radar data, because uh, you couldn't land on the moon without having some local correction of, of your uh, altitude. Of the height, right. Yeah. Your yeah. altitude and your, right. and your speed across the surface. Okay, okay. Um, so it gave a horizontal speed and distance? Yes, height. exactly. Yeah, right. That's right. It's like and what you guys do with automated rope underwater stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, let's see, Servicer, so there were some things in Servicer that I wrote, but the, uh, P the P50s were the IMU alignment programs, communication. the interpreter was uh, the code that allowed us to use another <coughs> language which was much slower, but which, which I'll find an example of before too long which was much slower, but which facilitated the um, vector matrix sort of operations that were central but to the navigation. Right. Oh, I'm still not understanding, fly. this is all in machine code. Most of this is in machine code, yes. Right. So this is a mnemonic for? Uh, CCS is right. count, compare, and skip. It was a, uh, uh, that instruction uh, went to one of the next four addresses, depending on whether uh, the uh, result whether what was in that uh, in, uh, that location was uh, positive, negative, positive zero, or negative zero, uh, and gave you four different choices. You usually knew which ones were possible when you got to that point, so you didn't have to use the whole thing. Uh, latitude, longitude, subroutines, conic subroutines, orbital integration. You so many of these, but not machine. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, so machine. Three starts, that, that all came into play during Apollo 11. When yeah, yeah. The alarms happened. Yeah, when, yeah. When we were doing five software restarts. Yeah. yeah. I mean, oh. mode switching, erupt, display interface routines, alarm and abort. Uh, the autopilot, which was the code that stabilized the computer, the uh, spacecraft in a given orientation. Uh, let me find. No, no, look. Steal the party. Steal the party. Yeah, go ahead. Make sure you get a good. This they're gonna love this. Uh, yeah. It's on page seven ninety-nine. <laughs> I mean, I used to know my way around this book much better, obviously, <laughs> than I do today, but. Lunar landing guidance equations. I wrote most of this. 
and the throttle throttle control <coughs> routine I wrote. Uh, let's see. Oh, we got a problem here? Uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> that's a green pad. Uh, that's right. I don't know what that was about. This was, oh, Delta V monitor. Uh, that was the code that when we turned on the engine, monitored to see when there started to be some uh, velocity in the accelerometers and uh, on the LIM-1 mission, the Delta V monitor prematurely sort of shut down the engine and, and sort of ran the mission a little bit. Hi, Victor, how are you doing? Good to see you. Which is doing, um, it, it essentially invokes a series. Nice to see you, Victor. This is great. Um, it's this really is so a, a series of subroutines that are being invoked by this code, and so it ran quite slowly, much more slowly than the this is the machine language. You see this TC to input here. That's uh, machine language instruction that says the following code is going to be interpretive code. So what's the first thing that happens is we clear a couple of flags, which means setting bits to zero. Clear some more flags. This is sort of getting ready. Um, oh, yeah. The lunar landing, landing. breaking phase. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the great. That's that's one that Everybody's people can actually understand. We can look at this. This is some of this stuff in mind, though. Yeah. Oh, I know. But you know. Having you briefing it, yeah, yeah, yeah. different <laughs> thing all together. Because <laughs> yeah. this was Has the whole thing. Been this was like, this is like part of the physics of it that was yeah. just had to be computerized, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. They, they tried to do it manually. It was just impossible. Right? You, yeah, you couldn't point. manually come down from lunar orbit to the surface. Yeah. Yeah. You'd overshoot energy, 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 energy efficient, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. If you had infinite crash, fuel, you could do it, sure, but yeah. you, know, you couldn't really do it. I mean, they did take over every time at around 400 feet, right. sort of a semi-manual mode. The computer was still handling the IP control. We all read David's book. Yeah, so. okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mean to interrupt your storytelling. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. No, yeah. No, this no, is no, part no. of our religion, right? Yes, so yes, we, no, we no, understand no. all this, right? Yeah. You, you, can't, you, can't, you can't be David's friend and not know the whole story. God, right? This is unbelievable. Yeah. So yeah. I don't mean to interrupt. You know, right. yeah. But well, we know that, right? Yeah. 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 Because it's... Um, it's 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 actually poorly understood, I think, by, by a lot of people. Right? Yeah. But everybody who read James book knows that, knows that, right? And, you agree with his? And hopefully within a year you'll be reading mine. It was also yeah. managed by him. Yeah. And the screw-up wasn't ours. It was basically a, a sneak circuit, if you will, that meant that under certain conditions, sort of by a matter of chance, uh, over something like 13% of the computer time could have been taken away. By the counting of meaningless, meaningless pulses coming in from the rendezvous radar interface, which shouldn't be <coughs> causing problems during the landing because we weren't using the rendezvous radar. But because of uh, a bad switch setting, it hadn't been properly tested or hadn't been properly reviewed before it was written on the checklists, uh, it ended up in that condition where, uh, you've heard all this, but it ended up in that condition where uh, a large amount, large percentage of the computer time was being taken away and therefore we were overloaded in the sense that we would schedule jobs to execute but they weren't able to finish before the next version of the same thing came along and uh, and so the queues got filled up and every time the queues got completely filled up we did a restart which mm -hmm. meant that we basically flushed what was going on and reconstructed it. And by doing that, the software acted, reacted adaptively, and we were able to, to keep it running, keep it running. Um, but it was close, and there were some other close ones too. <laughs> was any other that was closest to Apollo Eleven? Um, there was a there was a problem with the throttle that uh, we didn't even realize was there until after Apollo Twelve, where the throttle was almost unstable because. The published compens published timing data for the engine was incorrect, mm. and so we were overcompensating for the engine delay, and um, and we're right on the edge of the <coughs> stable. So when the, when 
the throttle change settings, it was you know, it took it a while to sort of level off into that setting. If it had been a little worse, it would have been out of control. It was also not very well visible. So it was still a little stuff. <laughs> Anyway, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. Wow, this Thank is you great. Thank you so much.